Hi everybody, I'm in my tackle room again. I'm tying hooks. I hate tying hooks as you know. But it's something that I'm very, very conscious of and I know I've got to do it and get, get the ones that I want. So look, we're doing a lot of winter fishing at the moment. As you've probably seen my videos, you, you can see that I'm doing lots of bomb and feeder fishing, which means I'm, I need to tie a bands up, spikes up, quick stops up. Now on the same match, I might be using all them three. I might be spiking, I might be banding, I might be quick stop. It depends on the bait that I'm going to be using. Now it's really important that, so I always make sure that I've got plenty of each tied up. So what I'm going to show you is what I do, why I tie them and the way that I tie them. It's only my way, I'm not saying that other people will tell you different, it's just my way and if it can help you then that's a bonus. So why do I tie me on, why don't I pre-tie? Because there's lots of good hooks and everything pre-tied. Well, I, I pre-time simply because and I can use the line that I want, I can use the hook that I want, I can use the, ba the band and the spike and the quick stop that I want. So everything that I want is in that, which it, to me is really important. I know exactly what I, when I put a bait on, when I cast it out, I know that it's 100% what I want and that's really important. So the first thing is, I'm very conscious of the length of the line between the hook and the hook bait that's really important as you can see there is quite a gap there's probably half an inch to three quarter an inch i don't like that it's too far for me i think that when the fish sucks it in i think that gap leaves it so it gives it a chance to spit it out because i don't think it sets the hook quite clearly so mine are never long if i have anything like that i just throw it away i'll start again i cut it off it's no, it's no good to me that i can i cannot fish with that my head tells me that's not going to work and the simple reason why I don't think it works is because I've had bad success with it. And what you'll find out in your own way of fishing is find out what's good for you. For example, that for me is the best. As you can see there, between the bait band and this bend of the hook, bend of the hook, right, is one mil or two mil, or like a sixteenth of an inch. A right little bit, just so it's free on its own. It doesn't actually go into the hook, it's free just free but only just so it's got to be a mill just below the bend of the hook and then that i think what happens then is a fish goes and it sucks the bait in sucks the hook in you've got him for me i've had best success with that so i will always do that it's really important to me when i'm fishing with a band and when i'm fishing with a spike it's very similar you tie them very similar but a quick stop is completely different so first of all what I'm going to show you is how to tie a band and a spike and it's exactly the same way. The first thing you do you get the line that you want to the hook. Now when I go to Lindon for example I'll be fishing for F1s and carp so my hook lengths are normally 014. When I go to Hawcroft where it's just carp fishing it'll be 016. Why is that then? Well when I fish 016 I know I can get away with it with carp when I fish off but I can't with F1s so when I go to Lindon very rarely you catch many F1s on 016. Some people will, some people won't, but I catch more fish on an 014. Why? I don't know. It just works that way for me. So I tie 014 and 016 to 18s and 16s. That's what I generally do. So how am I going to tie? Well, the first thing is, a pair of scissors is really important when you're tying these type of up. One, cut it off. Don't bite it, because when you bite it, you flatten it and you can't get it through the eye of of the hook so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to put a spike on there's a hole on the spike there and i'm just going to pass the line through i'm going to go up the spike like that i'm going to wet my fingers so then i wet the spike and i wet the line spin it so it then make a loop now what you've got to do which is a bit fiddly with a spike a lot easier with a band is pass it through that loop twice once you've passed it through twice like that, pass it through twice. To get the knot then, all I do, I get the spike, and the, there you go on the loop, and I pull with my left hand, pull it nice and tight, till it's nearly on it. Then when it's nearly on it, I grab both loose ends and I pull it quickly. Pull it right quick like that, and what happens then, is it goes onto the, onto the top of the thing like that, and you can see. And then all you do then, you cut the loose bit off, like that cut it off and you can see now that it 
you can see it's on top like that just pull it tight and make sure it just twizzle around there a little bit but we've got it then you go up the line and what I do at this point I usually do I usually have about nearly a meter line because I want to cut it then in, in what I want and usually most of my hook lengths are done 30 centimeters opposite end to where the spike is and I'll get the hook and what we're going to do now we're going to tie a knotless hook knotless knot on the hook so all I'm going to do I'm going to pass the line through down so if you're holding the hook like that with a bend like that pass it down and then all I'm going to do I'm going to pull it until the spike or the band is right at the end of the bend like that right at the end and once it's at the end I grip it with my left hand remember I'm right handed now we're going to do a knotless knot and all I'm going to do I'm going to go around it from the eye towards my fingers nine times nine then back over what you've just tied what you've just tied right six times and finish the last one's got to be at side of the eye that's really important that it's at side of the eye now because the line's gone through once reason why you cut it is so you can get it through again pass it down and then pull it you're holding it oh you're not letting go yet and then when you get to the tiniest little loop you pull it sharp like that and you've pulled it tight and that is a knotless hook with a spike on that's how you do that and then when you've got your spike you can get your pellets and you can get one then put it in like that and there you go spiked dead easy so you've got a spike and then there's different ways of putting the spike on some people put it through the flat bit like that and some people put it through the round bit I always put it through the round bit why I don't know I really don't know it's just what I've always done with the pellet I always hooked it that way so that's your spike that's easy so that's your spike what about a band now a band is exactly the same process but I'm going to show you it anyway so you, so I've done it for you again it's already been cut that I know that's been cut so all I'm going to do I'm going to get my band and what I'm going to do then I'm going to pass it the line through the band like that grip it exactly same go up the line wet my fingers wet the band wet the line make a loop pass it through once pass it through twice and then grip it the band and the loop like that pull it so it's nice and small last thing then get both loops and pull it as quick as you can and because it's wet it'll slide straight on to the band like that straight on to the band cut it off with your scissors like that go up your line whatever length you want I usually tie mine 30 centimeters so you need to go a bit longer again cut it that's really important because guess what we're doing again we're going to do a knotless knot so I'll get the hook so it's so it's going down the bend's going down pass it through the eye and then I want to line it up so it's at end end of the bend line it up grip it with my left hand grip it with my left hand and then now I'm going to go from the eye towards my fingers nine times I hope you remembered then come back over six times finish side of the eye that's important that you finish at side of the eye if you finish halfway up up what happens is it burns and, and, and it breaks you get your get your thing pass it down pull it last little bit like that pull it done and there you go and you've done a band knotless knot with a band on so all I'm going to do then is get a colour one so you can see it better all you do then fingers there you go get your band put it over like that put it on and you can see now that that's just below the bend of the hook that's really important now then you might have noticed I've got two tubs here both with wafters in but one's hard and one's soft and the soft ones are for spiking and quick stopping and the other ones are rock hard I put them on top at radiator to harden up so that if I've got a band on at that particular time when I'm fishing I don't have to take it off and put a spike on so that I can so I can just take one out and band it for me it's really important that I've got one of each because sometimes you're using a, a spike or a thing and 
and you wind in and you think, oh, I've got to change up lengths, so you've got to change different up lengths. But if I've got a spike on, I've got some I can spike. If I've got a band on, I've got some I can band. So it's really important. All I did was just put them up top at radiator. And what happens with them then is they got, went rock hard and I, I could interchange them all. But we're not always using pellets. Lots of times, especially in the winter, we're using bread and we're using corn. And it's really important now. So what we use for them are quick stops. Now what a quick stop is, is one of them. And that stops the bait coming off. Now what happens is, with these, is lots of anglers, they break one off and then put the line through the eye. Well you don't need to, because they're all lined up for you. They come off the mould and you can see the eyes in them there. And, and, and there's, an, there's, an, there's an old smack in the middle of them all. Like that, it's gone through. Then snap it off. Then what you do, it's exactly the same now. It's exactly the same way of putting a spike on and a band. I get that, wet the, wet the line with my fingers. Pass the quick stop through twice. Grip it with my right hand. Pull the two lines the other so you get re reasonably small. And then pull them as quick as you can, like that. Just pull it quick and you can see now that it's gone right at the side of the quick stop. And cut the loose end off. Like that. Cut the loose end off and you've now got your quick stop on. Now then. Again, this is really important now because we've got to the length now is different. It's different from a pellet. Well why is it different? Well you've got bread on a pit a long piece of bread. You might have a piece of meat on that's long. You might have corn. You might have a piece of corn on. And they're all different sizes. But because of the length, you've now got to have the hook and the quick stop, a little gap between them. And I always do it about three quarter an inch, one and a half centimetres, something like that. The reason for that is this, I tie them, because corn is cut in different sizes, you can then pick the piece of corn on that goes on, that goes on, the, on the hook. Ben's driving me nuts, but not to worry. So the first thing you do then, but again, we're down to a, there you go. Put it through the eye down. We want to. Uh, what we want is, there you go. Put it down. Now the gap is you've got to judge it now. What you think a piece of corn is. Piece. Of, remember, whatever you decide there, there'll be a piece of corn in there that will fit that. And all I'm doing, just go away. And then same thing. Then you grip it, and then it's a knotless knot again. You go up eight times. Sorry, nine times. You've corrected me, I know. Back over, six. Once you've got there, wet your line and pass it through. Pull it, get to the last little bit, exactly the same, pull it. And that's your knotless knot, but look at that difference. You've now got a gap. Now that's really important because if you're going to put one, two, three, four uh, punches of bread on, you need that gap to fill them up. And it's same with a piece of corn. So what I'm going to do now is to put a bait on, that quick stop's got a hole in it in the end. And all you do, you get a baiting needle and you put it on the baiting needle, put the line along there and then try and pick a piece of corn that will fit between them. And what I like to do, I like to pick the longer pieces like that and then where it's cut like that, I press it and I want it to come out in the skin at the end like that. Turn it over and then your quick stop stops at the end. Now look at that. Watch, watch where the piece of corn is and the hook. It's still a little bit free. Perfect that. And that's what I do with a piece of corn. So that's why you want a little gap with a quick stop. Simply so, simply so you've got a piece of corn on, piece of bread, piece of meat or even a carpo or something like that. In the winter, nearly all my fishing is done with them three things. Quick stops, bands, there you go. Quick stop, bands and spikes. And trust me, that's the way that I do it. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong. What I'm saying is what I do. See if I can find the band. There you go. Them's the three ways that I do. And what I do, I cut them all to 30 centimetres on my me, me rig mate. 
set them all up, make a loop in them. But they are the three ways that I tie them all on. And I always tie, them. if I get one wrong, I throw it away and start again because I know from experience how important it is the length of the, length of the bend of the hook to the bait band, to the spike, or to the quick stop. It's really, really important. And honestly, it, it, even sometimes when I'm fishing, and it comes back and I think it stretched that bit of line. Something's happened and it's straight. I break it straight off and put one on so that the bait is at the side of the bend of the hook. That's how important and how fussy I am with doing it. So try it. But remember, never forget that when you tie your own hooks, right, what I do, I, I use the line that I want, I use the hook that I want, I use the spike, the bait band and the quick stop that I want. I'm not relying on somebody else in a prepaid, in a pre-tied hook packet, I'm not relying on what they want. It's what I want and that's what matters because at, when I'm fishing, if I lose something, it's my fault, nobody else's. Oh, you learn a few things and uh, trust me, it's really important that you get it right. But there's lots of baits in the winter that we use, so you need them three things all set up. Oh, you've enjoyed that.